keyboard and mouse players can have a very hard time fighting against aim assist when you can run into things like this. But with the tips I give you, not only will you begin to outplay those controller players, but also dominate every single Warzone lobby just like me. I'm like chilling. That guy played the whole game to die like that. So did that guy. Oh my. Oh my God. The whole game just to die like that. I highly recommend you watch the whole video because every piece of information in this video is vital. Off the rip, let's talk about improving your aim. And the number one way to do that is by aim training. For aim training, if you're on PC, I personally use, and this video is actually sponsored by AimLab. AimLab is an application you can download through Steam that has dozens of training scenarios to help you improve your aim. For introductory aim trainees, I would recommend the following. Spider Shot for quick flicks onto enemies coming into your site. Sphere Track to improve your enemy tracking abilities and Grid Shot for learning to quickly move from target to target after each elimination. Aim Lab also gives you the option to easily match your in-game sensitivity to your Aim Lab sensitivity. All you have to do is go to your settings, your controls, set your game profile to whatever series you're on. In this case, it's going to be Call of Duty, and then you choose the release, which is going to be Warzone. They also have already added Vanguard. That way, if you want to train for Vanguard, you can do that as well. The next thing you can use to improve your aim is lowering your sensitivity. I personally think it's always going to be better to have a lower sensitivity in any first-person shooter game. After years of watching professional esports players play all kinds of games, I noticed that they love to use their entire arm rather than their wrist because it makes them much more precise. As we'll speak on a little bit later, I actually run a 1450 DPI on my mouse as well as a 2.0 sensitivity in Warzone. Next, you need to always make sure you're working very, very hard to center your aim. Centering is when you ensure that your crosshair is actually placed on the head and or body of the person you're facing. It's also best to try and keep it that way whenever you're moving about the map. That way you can immediately snap wherever you need to rather than having to come up from somewhere like their feet. Remember, you're always going to get more of a damage multiplier whenever you're shooting someone's chest and head rather than their arms and their legs. And lastly, make sure to use your movement to your advantage. When in a gunfight, it can literally be life or death if you are moving versus not moving. It may seem dumb to say, but most of the time you're going to run into people whose aim really aren't as good as yours. So if you can utilize strafing, jumping, going prone, and even sliding to your advantage, you're so much more likely to win the gunfight. Which brings us into our next section, and that's going to be how to improve your movement in Warzone with keyboard and mouse. The first thing you're gonna want is better keybinds. Having keybinds that are easily accessible and work for you is always going to be your best bet at having better movement. Remember, if you're having a hard time reaching the keys, more than likely, you're probably not gonna outplay your enemy with your movement. Past keybinds, it's always best to actually learn the best key combinations you can. If you'd like to hear more about about the best ways to move about Warzone, I highly recommend you check out Warzone Bootcamp episode one, where we discuss this exactly. I'll make sure to have a link to the Warzone Bootcamp playlist in the description down below. In that video, you'll be able to find things such as slide canceling, bunny hopping, and even Peeker's Advantage, which is a huge, huge deal. And the last thing you can do to improve your own movement is to actually recognize patterns in your enemy's aim and movement. One of the hardest things a new player can do is actually begin to recognize patterns. However, the trick to doing that is literally just think about what you would do in a situation and outplay them because they're more than likely going to do the exact same thing. So do whatever the opposite is. To finish things off, we'll discuss everyone's main question and the easiest thing to adjust our in-game settings. However, remember, there is so much more to it than just your settings. So make sure you do your best to implement everything else we've talked about in today's video. As for the best settings, the first thing we wanna talk about is our sensitivity. Personally, I use a 1450 DPI paired with a 2.0 in-game sensitivity and a point. 5 ADS sensitivity for high zoom and low zoom. I personally set my sensitivity low to allow myself to hit more precise shots. However, I set my air vehicle sensitivity to its max because it's completely impossible to turn those when on mouse and keyboard.
I will say, I found that if you slowly move your mouse, it will actually turn you faster, which seems a little bit backwards. The next setting we'll want to pay attention to is our FOV. I set my FOV to 120 as a keyboard and mouse player because it feels like you actually end up hitting more shots and it's easier to stay on target and track the enemy. I also set my ADS field of view to affected rather than independent. Not only can this be useful to see the area around you and allow you to snap to other players very quickly, but it also makes it easier to hit your target consecutively. Now there's a few settings that can cause you trouble. So I'm going to rapid fire these so you can get them fixed as soon as possible. Automatic sprint. I personally have mine set to automatic tack sprint, but you have to keep in mind, it's going to make it to where you aim down your sights a little bit slower than you normally would. And it can really screw you up when you're not wanting to push into a gunfight, but you accidentally do. Weapon mount activation. I personally set mine to ADS plus use because I don't want to end up accidentally mounting when I don't mean to. Armor plate behavior, which for some reason is under score streaks, I always set to apply all because it can make it easier to get out of a gunfight and back in while plating up and not having to worry about any of your buttons. Vehicle camera reset center should always be set to disable because it can really mess up your driving if it's not i personally recommend you set your map behavior to hold rather than toggle because if you have it on toggle you could accidentally keep it up in the middle of a gunfight which i've done so many times and lastly under menu navigation you want to unbind the keybind for navigate to next tab because it can actually mess you up when you're going to grab your loadout as it's naturally set to the use button and will move you to the next page which is default classes as for my keybinds i'm going to quickly go through them on screen now for you that way if if you want to pause it feel free to do so and copy them